If you want to improve the page load times of your website, you probably want to see how fast or how slow your website is loading in the first place. In this video, I'm giving you a simple method how you can track load times inside of GA4 and I'm gonna show you how to build a custom report around it. All right, let's dive in. Hey and welcome to the channel, my name is Leon. This channel exists to help you use your web stats to grow your website without spending hours in the process. I wanna thank everyone that has been liking my videos and has subscribed to the channel recently because that really helps me get these videos out to as many people as I can. As a way to say thank you, I have created a short cheat sheet on how you can grow your website traffic. So whether you have a new domain or you have an existing domain, if you want to grow your website traffic, go to the link in the video description to grab that cheat sheet for free. Also, if you like this video and wanna watch more, just head over to my profile, I have created tons of videos over the past year on how to set up Google Analytics and how to use the data in order to grow your website. All right, we're talking about tracking site speed inside of GA4. And I wanna tell you that there are a couple of ways you can do this. There's a simple way, and that is just by tracking the time it takes for a page to load. So from the moment people enter the page until it has fully loaded, you just track that time and then track that over every visitor of your site. And that is a really good way of pinpointing potential problem areas on your site because you'll immediately see what pages are performing really bad and what pages are performing better than others. However, you need to understand that the file size and the loading time of your site does not give the complete picture of the loading time. Specialists in this area will often say it's not about the weight, like the file size, it's more about the wait, like how much time do I need to wait before I can start using the page? Because you can have a, an enormous website that's for instance four megabytes, but if you open up the page and you can start reading immediately and while you're reading the rest of the page is loaded, that's not really so bad. But if you have a website that's smaller in file size, but you're staring at a white screen for a couple of seconds before you can even start to read, that's really bad. So it's not only about the file size, it's also about how much time do people need to wait. And you can use some clever engineering to make a like really large and bulky page feel very snappy and very fast. And that is what it's really about. But that doesn't mean that just tracking page load times is not useful. I find it just a really easy way to find problem areas on your site, but just know that it doesn't give a complete picture. If you want like to have a deep analysis of a specific page, just use the page speed insights tool that's provided by Google. I find that just really insightful and very well thought out. So I would just use the report that we're building today, spot problem areas, and then do a deep analysis via the PageSpeed Insights test. All right, let me show you how you can track the page load times inside of GA4. We're inside of Google Tag Manager because we need to set up a couple of things here. And the first step is to pull in a short script. I will put a link in the video description to a script. This script was made by Dave and he posted it to the lost data block inside of the comments. I've seen this small script end up in countless blogs on this topic. So thank you, Dave. I always like to give credit where credit is due. I've put this script under this page here. I've also put this credit to Dave at the top here, just go ahead and copy this small script and let's go into Google Tag Manager because the first step is to make a new variable. So under variables, we're gonna look for the section user defined variables. And here we're gonna create a new user defined variable. I'm gonna call it page load time. We'll be using the custom JavaScript variable type and we're gonna paste in the script here. There's one more thing that we need to do because if the variable for some reason doesn't work, so gives back undefined. We want it to be a zero. All right, that's it. Let's hit save and let's go into tags for the second step. The second step here is to make a new tag and I'm gonna call it 0110 GA4 event page loaded. I've made a separate video on how I name my tag because this is not for functionality. This is just for structure to organize my container and to make sure that I can find what I'm looking for if I'm ever coming back to this. I've made a separate video on my naming conventions inside of Google Tag Manager. So if you're interested, I'll put a link in the video description. But to make it work, we need to choose our tag configuration. I'm gonna choose Google Analytics and then GA4 event. You can literally just paste in your measurement ID from GA4, but I've put this in its own variable. So it's right here. And then as event name, I'm gonna say page underscore loaded. We want to add two more parameters. The first parameter is page loaded count. This will just track the amount of times we've 
actually track this. I will show you later on why this is important. The second parameter that I want to track is the page loaded and then time in seconds. And here we're going to insert the variable that we've just made. So under this little icon, I'm going to look for page loaded. This is the variable that we've just added. I'm going to insert it here. And the tag here is already done. There's one more thing that we need to do. We need to add a trigger. I'm going to add a new trigger that I'm going to call page has loaded. So this will just fire the moment the page is loaded. I'm going to choose the window loaded trigger here. And I'm going to do one more thing here. I want to say page load time is not equal zero. Because just in case the script doesn't work, I don't want to track wrong data. So that's why I do this. I will only track if there is actually page load time present. So I'm going to hit save. I'm going to save my tag. And the only thing I want to do here is I want to test if it is working. So to test if it is working, I'm just going to hit preview type in my URL and then just open up the first page. Let's look if the page load time has loaded. Yeah, there it is, page loaded, the event tag is loaded. It has loaded on the window loaded, so let's go ahead and see what the actual value is. And here it says the page load time in seconds is one and a half seconds. And let's just navigate to some other place. Yeah, there you go. So here the window loaded is one second. Let's go ahead into Google Tag Manager this page. Let's see. Yeah, 0 0.9 seconds. So now I have verified that the script is loaded. I'm just going to hit submit. And I'm going to say publish. So the last thing that we need to do, we need to go into Google Analytics itself under admin. And we need to add some custom definitions. So under admin, there is a section that says custom definitions. By the way, this screen changes all the time. So it might be in a different place in the future. But right now it's under data display and then custom definitions. And in this screen, we're going to add a two custom metrics. So I want to create a custom metric with the name page load time. And here I'm going to use the variable page loaded time in seconds. This is exactly the same parameter that I've used in my um, tag setup. And then as unit of measurement, I'm going to say seconds. So this is the total amount of time it takes for a page to load. I'm going to hit save and I'm going to create a new one as well. I'm going to say page load event count. So this is the amount of times that we have tracked a page load event. So the parameter name here is page loaded count. And I'm going to hit standard unit of measurement. So we just want the amount of times it has loaded. I'm going to hit save as well. And then under calculated metrics, I'm going to create a new calculated metric that is called average page load time. And here we're going to make a formula. We're going to say page load time divided by page load event count. So we don't want the total amount of time that has loaded, but we want the average. So if we have 100 people on a specific page, we want the average loading time across all those 100 visitors. And this will make sure we have that. So now let's hit save. And now we're done with all our settings. All right, the last thing that I want to show you is how you can create a report around the data that we're collecting. Just know that because you've just made the settings, you will not have data immediately in your report. And the same thing will happen with me. I've just set it up on my site as well. So we're not going to see data immediately in our report. But just check back in one or two days to see if your data is actually working or not. All right, I'm going to go under reports. And then the first thing that I like to do, if you haven't done this already, is to make another folder here that says something like custom reports. You might already have done that, so you can just skip this step. But under library, I'm going to choose a new collection. I'm going to hit blank. I'm going to call this custom reports. And I'm going to say as a topic, page load times. Apply. Uh, we're going to keep it empty for now. I'm just going to hit save and go back into this screen. Now under reports, we're going to create a new report and we're going to create a detail report and we're going to choose a blank report. The report setup is actually really simple. As dimensions, I'm just going to use page path and screen class. This will just provide with all the page URLs without the query parameters. I'm going to hit apply. And I'm going to combine this with two metrics. First, I want the views. So this is just the amount of times that the page has been viewed. This is really important. We'll sort on this metric. So the most important pages, the most viewed pages will get to the top. And we're going to add the average page load time to this report as well. And now we're going to hit apply. So as I already told you, there is no data here available. There's nothing to worry about. Just check back tomorrow 
or in a couple of days to see if your report is working or not. Now we just need to hit save. I'm gonna call this page load time and I'm gonna hit save. The last step here is to add this report to our custom collection and make it visible in the menu here. So under custom report, I'm gonna edit the collection. I'm gonna look for page load time. So here it is. I'm gonna drop the report right here. I'm gonna hit save. I'm gonna save the changes to the current collection. I'm gonna go back. The last step here is to actually publish the collection because it's unpublished by default. So I'm gonna publish the collection. And now another folder here shows up with the name custom reports and we have our page load times report right here. All right, one final thing about this report here. If you're analyzing average page load time on your site, always check the pages that have at least 50 to 100 views because you want a reliable measurement and you need lots of data to get a reliable average page load time. So if you see a page load time of 20 seconds, but you only have one or two views on that page, that might not be a reliable measurement. That is why we created a views column here and an average page load time column as well. All right, that's it for today. I hope this video was clear. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. Also, if you like this video and want to watch more, just head over to my profile. I have created tons of videos over the past year on how you can set up Google Analytics and how you can use that data in order to grow your website. All right, have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.